Welcome to the House of Dua, the platform from which you learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his creation, his message, and his chosen religion of Al Islam. The platform from which you learn how to reach out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your supplications, for your needs, for your fears, for your aspirations. The platform from which you learn how to succeed in the world we live now and how to return back to Allah for accountability. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, many of us in the world we live are indeed finding things difficult. There are challenges here and there. There is struggle here and there, many of which are beyond your control. Many of which are situations that were imposed on you, not because of your own errors, but because of what other people have done, or the interaction of events around the world around us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Arum, Zohara al Fasad, Feliberi, Wali Bahari, Bimaka, Sabati, Aidinas. Corruption has spread across the world and across the sea because of what mankind has done. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed that to happen so that all of us would taste the consequences of our own deeds or misdeeds. Yes, whenever you do something wrong, either as an individual or as a group, there must be a consequence. So we are all facing consequences of man's action on the planet today, either individually or collectively. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us. But the solution to these difficulties lie in the revelations Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent to us. If indeed we are able to comply with these revelations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this book, al Furqan, has told us what is right and what is wrong. If you stay away from that which is wrong, then of course you will always be happy because you are bound to follow that which is right. These are the verses we are bringing to you, the verses that will enable you to make that right choice. The choice to do what is right so that you will be happy in this world, at the same time be happy in what we meet Allah on the day of accountability. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, today we are coming to you with another beautiful verse from the Quran, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala identifies one of the problems that we face in life and the solution to it. The problem is choice of friends. Who are your companions? Who are the people you stay with, interact with on a daily basis? Who are they? Have you heard of the common saying, show me your friend and I will tell you who you are? The kind of friendship you keep will actually determine your personality. That will enable us to know the kind of person you are. You cannot say you are not a gambler when you are always in the company of those who gamble. You cannot say you are not a politician when you are always in the company of politicians. Whatever you do, the kind of people you move with, that's what, largely speaking, determines your behavior. Yes, we are in this world and we cannot live alone without interacting with people. But we have to make a choice as to who is a good friend and who is a bad friend. And your ultimate good friend is no one other than Allah's one or other. He decides for you that which is good and bad. The more you are close to him, the better you are in your affairs. Allah's one or other will want us, as we interact in this world, to choose the right people to move with. Otherwise, they may deviate you from the path of Allah, which he has created for you. And when they do that, you are bound to face some difficulties. That's why we are bringing you some verses in the Quran today to remind us about this. Yes, what are your guidelines? What are your parameters? What are those issues you take into consideration in order to choose who will be your companion in the world we live? Many of us put materialism as a priority. I'm a friend to that person because of what I will gain for him or what he's doing for me. I'm a friend of that person because I need a situation whereby when I'm doing something, people will surround me. So I move with the kind of people. I join any society, any group of people, so that when I'm doing anything like birthday, like marriage, like funeral, 
I will have a large group of people to be around me. Whether those people are bad or good is immaterial to you. Unfortunately, that is not a good criteria for choosing who should be your friend. My dear brothers and sisters, there are people who do that just for the sake of show off. For people to feel that, you know what, they have a large grouping behind them. There are others who choose friends based on what they can exploit from those friends, what they can benefit from those friends. As long as the friends are able to fulfill their needs, they are attached to that friend. But once that need cannot be fulfilled, they turn their back against that friend and chew him up. There are people like that. But there are others who choose friends not because of what they will gain or because they need groupings or because they need uh, some other ephemeral stuff like that. No, they choose friends because this friend is a good person. A good person in the sense that he does what Allah asks him to do and he stays away from what Allah asks him to stay away from. That's why he's my friend. We have a beautiful hadith of the Prophet, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, narrated by Ibn Abbas and some others, they allow on him as the name. In which the Prophet, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, stated that on the day of accountability, there are those who will be on the special shade of Allah. Special shade of Allah, they will qualify for it. A day when there will be no shade for anybody except the shade of Allah. Yawma la zwilla illa zwilla. Yawma la yafo umalo wala benona illa man atala bikalm bi salim. A day that no one will be of any benefit to anybody except those who come to Allah with clear heart. On that day, some people will be privileged to stay in a special arena of Allah. Among such people, seven categories of them are those who are friends because of the fact that they share commonality. They do what allows them to do and they stay away from what allows one or what allows them to stay away from. You love somebody because you always find him in the masjid. You love somebody because you always see him reading the Quran in a beautiful voice. You love somebody because He's always treating his family well in the way Allah allows us to treat our family. That's why you love him. You are in the right direction. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, it's important for us to choose the right friends. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah and Nisa, Allah says, Woman asa no dina me man aslama wa ja holy la wa hua mose no. What taba me letta Ibrahim anifa. What takaza Allah wa Ibrahim akalela la hukubal kubi. Who is more right in his worship, in his deen, in his faith, in his belief than one who surrenders to Allah? Who turns his face to Allah? Who makes Allah his friend, his companion, his guide, his sustainer, his provider, his curer, his cherisher, his nourisher? Who is more right than that person? Well, who are Muslim and the person does good, good that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks him to do. And when he does so, he does so as if Allah is seeing him. Even though he does not see Allah, he knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing him. Yeah, that's a good person. And not only that, what a khazam, a letter Ibrahim, Hanifa. That person followed the tradition of Ibrahim. Why? Because Ibrahim surrenders to Allah without doubt. In everything he did, he did then. According to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah loves him. What a has Allah Ibrahim Akhalil. As a result of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Ibrahim as his own friend. You want Allah to choose you as a friend, then follow the tradition of Ibrahim. Alayhi salam. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, these are very, very important issues we need to put at the back of our mind. There are people who make bad choices, there are people who make good choices. Let's give you a few examples of bad choices. There was a man known as Ukuba ibn Abi Muwet, Lanetulai Ali. He was a friend to Umay ibn Khalaf, Lanetulai Ali. They lived in Makkah. They were the hench people of Makkah. But Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam one day wanted to make sure that they, these henchmen, these henchmen of Makkah, they accept Islam. So Ukuba ibn Muwet was a businessman. He had a big party after he returned from a big business trip and invited the Prophet. The Prophet attended the party thinking that it was an opportunity for him to win these big men of Makkah into Islam. So when he got there, Ukba ibn Abi Mu'ayt asked him to eat, and he said, Ukba, I will not eat your food. Why, ya Muhammad? He said, because you are not a Muslim. Ukba ibn Abi Mu'ayt said, what will I do therefore for you to eat my food? I won't allow you to live here without eating my food. People are looking at us. I'm, I'm going to be brought to shame if you do that. 
The Prophet said, if you accept Islam, I will eat your food. So he went ahead and accepted Islam. Shahad to Allah, 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 Muhammad, Rasulullah. Everybody was shocked, amazed. The Prophet thereafter took his food. But when Umayyad ibn Khalaf came, who was a tight friend to Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayyad, he was infuriated. He told Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayyad, I will no longer be your friend. And I'm not going to protect you anymore. Unless you go back to Muhammad and recant your decision to join Islam, to say that there's one God. No, go and change it and spit at Muhammad, if you like. Uqba ibn Mu'ayyad, out of his fear to his friend, because he loved his friend of this world. He doesn't want a situation where when he's doing a party, Umayyad ibn Khalaf will not be there, or other friends will not be there, just as many of us do. What if I'm doing my birthday, this man doesn't come for my birthday, or my marriage, or my, my friend? Look, don't associate yourself with bad people. They will ruin you. Uqba ibn Abim Uwait actually obeyed Umayyad ibn Khalaf. He went to meet the prophet and told the prophet, I no longer believe in one God. And in fact, to hell with you. He spat at the prophet. Consequently, Allah reverted that spirit to Babi Muhammad. His face got burnt right away. And he began his suffering from there until the day of accountability. Allah therefore reported that incident in Surah Al Furqan. Ukbabrimwe began to cry. Allah's ban what Allah said on the day of accountability, he will bite his finger and tell himself, Ya letani. Woe unto me, destruction upon me. Why didn't I follow Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam by going the right way? Yahweh let her let any destruction upon me today for listening to my friend, Umayyad ibn Khalaf. Lakadi Adwal and Yahweh Zikri, he misled me from the right way. Bad Aizijah, and after that right way has been revealed to me. After Muhammad has spoken to me and I accepted the truth, he came and turned me around. Indeed, Ukana Shaitan only in Sahan and Khazola. Shaitan is actually a deserter. When he leads you into a problem, he deserves you to struggle out of it. In the world we live, that's how he cried and cried in penury, in suffering, in misery, until he passed away. He didn't see Umayyad ibn Khalaf. So when he will be crying on the day of accountability, he will not see Umayyad ibn Khalaf. My dear brothers and sisters, that's the consequence of having a bad friend. Who is your friend, therefore? Somebody who benefits from you? Somebody whom you think you cannot do without? Somebody who does not fear Allah? If that's the kind of friend you have, you have a big problem. Let's give you another example of a good friend. A good friend is a relationship that existed between Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said Nabu Bakr Yes, Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam was just two years senior to say Nabu Bakr. But they play together, they live together, they love each other. And more importantly, in the cause of Allah. In the cause of Allah. Sayyidina Abu Bakr was the one who accompanied Muhammad from Makkah to Medina. He was the one who spent most for Islam during the lifetime of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. He went on to become the in-law of the Holy Prophet Muhammad when he married his beautiful daughter Aisha radiallahu anha to the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. This is what good companionship means, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Two years after the Prophet passed away, he too passed away. Today, both of them, may Allah admit them to Jannah. They are in Jannah. And we are mentioning them because we want to be like them. That's why we are bringing you the verse that we are bringing to you today that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed in that connection. Choose the right friend. In Surah Al-Isra, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya, you are lazina, amano, tokula, tokula, hawakuno, ma, swadiki. Oh, you are believe, be mindful of Allah. And make sure you are in the company of those who are righteous, who are truthful. Make sure you choose the right friends, men or women, who are truthful, who are on the way of Allah. That's your ultimate friend. Don't choose the wrong people on account of the fact that that's what you benefit from them or they will make you famous. No, they will destroy you. And many of us are already suffering today because of the friendship we have. Let us be very careful. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Let's now go to Surah An-Nisa, verse 69. That's the verse we are bringing to you today. In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared, 
wo ma yo ti la wa rasula ba o la ika ma ale ze ina ani ama la hu ale mi na de bi ye na wo se de ke na wo su ada wo so ale he na wo asuna o la ika rafika la ho cross ke dio ma dia bro rasin sa sin islam alas ba no wo ta la se whoever obeys allah and follow muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam obey the commandment of allah and make the prophet your friend do what the prophet do and stay away from what he stayed away from. If you do so, those are the ones. Ma alazin and am Allah wa alayhi min and nebi yin wa swidi kina wa shuhada. You definitely will find yourself in the company of those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored, he has loved among the swidi kun, among the nebi yin, among the shuhada, among the truthful, among the righteous, among the those who sacrifice for Allah. You definitely will find yourself in their companionship. And that companionship is where? It's now. Like Allah May Allah grant us that. The highest place in Jannah Alfred does. That's the highest companionship. This verse was revealed in connection with a man known as Thauban. Thauban was a manumitted slave of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. After serving the Prophet for some time, the Prophet decided to free him. And the Prophet moved to Medina. Why Thauban was in Makkah. One day the Prophet came back to Makkah and went to the Kaaba. On hearing that the Prophet was coming to Makkah, Thauban went to the Kaaba to wait for the Holy Prophet Muhammad. He was weeping. He was tired. He was dejected. And finally, he had the opportunity to meet the Prophet. And the Prophet asked him, Ya Thauban, what has happened? Why are you in this condition? You were not like this before. Thauban told the Holy Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, I'm like this because I've been missing you, Ya Muhammad. I'm like this because I've been missing you. I've been looking forward to meeting you again. And I know that you have moved to Medina. And on the day of accountability, I also know that you are going to be among the highest, among the Arafikul Allah, the highest station in Jannah. And I may probably not be there. If I'm lucky to be in Jannah, I'm going to be at the lowest level. I probably will not be able to meet you. This has occupied my mind since you left me. This is why I have become tired, dejected, emaciated. Ya Rasulallah. Today, now that I have set my eyes on you, Alhamdulillah, I'm back to my normal self. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala was not told Fauban. Don't worry about it. Then Allah brought this verse. Woman, you tell la wa Rasulullah. Paula, I come out as a nanny, I'm a lamb, I lay him in under be ye, and I was with the cane, I was sure that I was so ali, and I was now like a refica. Whoever loves a lamb, love the messenger. You will always be among those whom you love. On the day of accountability, you will also be among those whom you love. So the professor allowed to allow a lay was lamb, kind of calm down, thou ban, two thou ban. For as long as you love me, if it pleases Allah's ban of what Allah, he will be among us on the highest level, Arafiq of Allah in Jannah. May Allah make us among those who will be there. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, if you follow the way of Allah, you will always bring joy to yourself, even in the life we live now. And on the day of accountability, you find yourself among the highest in Jannah. May Allah make it possible for us. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let me tell you something. Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he was in this life and when he was about to die, he told Allah, Oh Allah, grant me wisdom and join me among the righteous on the day of accountability. That companionship, that special companionship is what we are talking about. Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam told Allah, Rabbi, kade atretane, minan moloku wa alamtane, me tawele ni ahadeet. Party last time I was at the one night, and I was in the field in the one after the wafani Muslim man was hiking in the soil. Oh Allah, kadi atete ni minen muluk. You have granted me great honor. You have granted me a great position, position of leadership in life. Well, I'm telling me that will I had this, and you have taught me how to interpret dreams as well as deep-seated matters that other people cannot understand. Party last time I was at the one. You are actually the true creator of heaven and earth. And I will leave you feed on your own after. You are my protector. You are my friend in this world and in the after. The only thing I beg you, yeah, Allah, that what for name Muslim? When you want to take my soul, take my soul as the one who has surrendered to you. While he can be swallowing. And then join me in the companionship of those who are swallowing. 
Allah talk about today. The righteous. Ibrahim alayhi salam prayed for it, asking Allah for it. Yusuf alayhi salam prayed for it, asking Allah for it. All the Ambiya of Allah desired it and they asked Allah for it. What about Muhammad? Sallallahu ta'ala. Aisha radi Allah and her said, when the Prophet was about to die, the last statement he made was, Arafiqal Allah. Arafiqal Allah. Arafiqal Allah. He continued to tell Allah, Arafiqal Allah, the highest companion. I want to be there, Ya Allah. I want to be there among the highest companion. Aisha radi Allah and her asking, what's going on, Ya Muhammad? He said, I've just been offered two alternatives. Either to take whatever is in this planet and they will belong to me and live here forever, or I go to Akira and accept Arafiq al Allah, the highest position in Jannah. And when I see what was there, I have no choice. I have to choose that. I prefer to go there. I say, he didn't even choose us who are his wives, who are companions to him in this world, who were the closest to him. But he chose Arafiq al Allah. My dear brothers and sisters, like what Allah has prepared for us cannot be compared to what we are seeing in this world. Your wife cannot be better than your relationship with Allah's one or other. So also are your children. So are your brothers and sisters. Let's learn to make good friends. Stay close to Allah's one or other. Love your wife because of Allah. Love your children because of Allah. Love your companions because of Allah. I mean in compliance with the way Allah asks you to love them. That's the only way you will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when the chips are down, your wife will not accompany you to the grave. Your children will not accompany you. Your friends will not accompany you. Aisha Rade Allah and her said the Prophet didn't even choose us who were his wives. He chose something else. What did he choose? Arafiq al Allah. The highest station in China. He asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us in a position where we can choose the Best friends, friends that will live in this world and be happy together, and friends with whom we shall be among the highest companions in Jannah of Fridas. May Allah make it so for us.